Hi, my name is Toby Thorson. I'm the head of marketing at Signup Software, and we have a product called XFlow. And XFlow is an AP automation solution that's embedded inside Business Central. I'm here today with my colleague, Emil Striedfeldt. But just to start things off, uh, just a little bit about XFlow and Signup Software. XFlow is an AP automation solution that's been in the market since 2003. So we started out on Navision 3.7. And at the same time, we also started out on Accepta uh, 3.0. So we've been around for a long time. We only do one thing. We're an ISV solution that provides AP automation and we do it inside D365. So we have a solution for finance and operations and we have a solution for Business Central. Uh, for finance and operations, we're a Microsoft preferred solution on AppSource. We have a global footprint with almost a little over a thousand customers in all industry verticals. And that is split pretty evenly between 50%, 50% on FNO and Business Central, of course. What we mean when we talk about AP processing inside D365 is basically that we provide best in class AP automation that's embedded into the ERP solution. So there's no integrations, there's no duplication of data, it's just a single source of the truth at all time. And with best in class AP automation, well, what we mean is that we try to efficiently streamline the invoice process to, a, to an extent that's as optimal as possible to the client. So what we mean by AP processing inside Business Central is we what we provide is, what XFlow is, is best in class AP automation embedded into D365 Business Central. What this means to us is that we provide a solution that automates the invoice process as much as possible efficiently streamlining the process, making it mobile, making it possible for uh, provers to approve on the go while AP staff are working inside their familiar environment that they know really well. This of course also provides full visibility, full transparency across the entire process. We leverage Power BI on this. So you get real time AP data that's available not only to the AP staff, but then of course to anyone across the enterprise. It can be used upstream to, to finance or procurement to basically improve uh, supplier uh, collaboration or supplier enablement and even sourcing. Uh, Having this type of best in class AP automation inside Business Central, of course, provides you with a greater degree of control. You're compliant to company policy, you're minimizing the risk of fraud. And one of the things that you can really see when you, when you automate a process or when you set up a process across your enterprises, of course, you're gonna see uh, that as soon as you get that one single process in your company, that's gonna lower your processing cost. So what all the things that we do basically pull down into that. You get lower invoice processing counts, you're able to uh, capture discounts because you can uh, process invoices more quickly, you're doing it more streamlined, you're doing it with less paper. And, and the really, really key thing for the people who are working in Business Central is of course that XFlow, uh, as it's not a, not a cloud solution that's integrated into it, it's embedded into your business central environment. So you have a single source of the truth. You're working in real time. You're gonna see this when EML demos the solution that whenever you actually, when, when, it, when an end user approves something, it's automatically approved directly, instantly inside business central. Uh, you're leveraging your business central investment, of course. Uh, AP staff are working in a familiar UI or UX. We're also being able to leverage all the technology that Microsoft provides to us. So with XFlow, you get machine learning for, for pre-coding. You can also use RPA or advanced business rules to also do pre-coding and to automate the process as much as possible. As I mentioned previously, we're using Power BI, so you get full process analytics. And a final point on this, that, that as we're an embedded solution into Business Central, you're relying on your Business Central security. So it's in your Azure environment. It's not somewhere else. You don't have to go look for SOX compliance. It's the same thing that you set up for your ERP solution. XFlow is built inside or embedded into Business Central. The only thing we are agnostic about is data capture. 
And why are we doing that? Well, we know that a lot of companies already have a data capture solution in place. We often bundle XFlow with ReadSoft Online from Kofax because we believe that's a really great solution. And Eamon's going to show you how that works. But what we then do is that from data capture, we basically pull this all the way to import validation. We intelligently pre-code, do all the approval matching to final posting. So what happens is once the data is captured, uh, we will, in the import, in the automated import, we will basically run all the validations that you will run on a manual in, uh, invoice that you import. So you're doing all the checks and balances. We can check against third-party blacklists. We can double check so that the master data is correct, which basically means that XFlow as an AP automation tool will act as a fraud prevention tool. Based on what's on the invoice, then we can intelligently pre-code this to minimize the manual labor by AP. So what we do here is we actually have two different ways to do this. Uh, the traditional way was, was the way of RPA or robotic process automations. We used to call them advanced business rules, where you basically create a template for coding based on uh, rules that you set up. Uh, for instance, if it's this vendor and it's to a person, a reference that's in this department, we'll code it this way. Uh, this summer, we added a machine learning capability. So on top of that, we can also look at all historic invoices. So we run the machine learning on historic invoices. They get clustered into different clusters. And if an invoice comes in and it comes into one of those clusters, the closer it is to the densest point, the higher confidence level it will have, and it will pre-code according to what those invoices have been coded on previously. The only thing that the AP staff will have to do is check that this that it actually works. Of course, they can always manually interact with it, or if it doesn't trigger any of those, well, they have to pre-code it themselves. Based on that, we will run it out through three different uh, workflows, probably. Uh, Three-way PO matching, of course, will be the ones that do the purchase order invoices. In the middle here, we have agreement or contract matching, which I mentioned we can uh, show you and we talked about a little bit earlier about when it comes to recurring non-PO spend. And then, of course, we also can automate a non-PO approval process. So we actually not only create the approval tree, but we also trigger that and then it's sent out for approval. The approvers will get an email, click on a link. They can do approvals in their mobile phones. They can do approval on their, on their laptop. And the interesting bit is that if they need to change something, they will actually just create a new or, or trigger any changes in the approval workflow. So if I'm on, if I get an invoice and I want to split the line, I say like, well, half of it is marketing, half of it is on IT. It automatically splits that line, creates a new approval workflow for IT, send passes that on. So we're doing approval not on invoice level, we're doing it on line level. And if everything's approved, well, it's already set up for final posting, you can work in AP to look at that, and then it will all be available in the Power BI analytics. So that said, really short overview of the process that we're gonna walk through today. So I'm gonna hand this over to Emil, and you're gonna get like a real hands-on demo of XFlow inside Business Central with ReadSoft Online as the data capture engine. Hi, my name is Emil Friedfeldt. I will be showing you our product in Business Central, starting from the interpretation of invoices in uh, an OCR interpretation software of our preference. On this screen, you can see that I'm showing you the software Cofax Readsoft Online, which is our preferred OCR interpretation service as we're highly integrated and so is Business Central out of the box. So what we can do, what we can see right now is the first view that a user will see when they log in. You will have all the invoices which have come in uh, from a job from your Outlook, for instance, automatically forwarded to Readsoft. Uh, and what you need to do is select the invoices you want to work with and press start and it will show you the PDF image in the middle and it will show you the interpreted data on the right hand side. To capture data, if it's incorrect, you need to select or go to that 
column or that field and just double click or select the area where you want to capture the value from now on. And your goal is to have everything green with no error messages and then it's ready to press OK and be sent into Xflow or be ready for Xflow to import it. The next step which I'll be showing you is now in Business Central. Now you can see that I'm logged into Business Central. Uh, I've selected to use a role center customized for Xflow so I have easy access to everything from the areas where the invoices land from Readsoft to the import journals or to view active invoices uh, throughout the approval status or look at any history such as poster documents or anything else. Uh, this is also the area where you can add Power BI graphs uh, to grab data from Xflow and BC. If we go into the import journals, you can see I've divided it into two journals or two areas where I want invoices to automatically land uh, from Readsoft. Uh, we have one for, in my case, expense invoices, and then a second one with purchase order matched invoices. Uh, and I have a total of three interpreted invoices from Readsoft. So what we will do is I will click on the expense journal to open up the invoices I have here. Uh, what you can see straight off the bat is you can see the PDF for the invoice which is selected at the time. And this will automatically change when I change to a second line. All the invoices which I have in my examples today have only been interpreted on a header level. So I have captured no lines in the OCR interpretation service, although that is an option. Even though I don't have lines interpreted, you can see I have an automatically generated line. In this case, it's been automatically generated from historically posted documents. Uh, it's Xflows or signups way of machine using machine learning to predict what coding the invoice should have. Uh, we obviously have many more ways of suggesting coding. You can plainly put it on the vendor to have a specific coding or a specific account uh, every single time you want the invoice, uh, well, when you get the invoice. Alternatively, you can capture information on the invoice to determine the coding of the lines. So what's important to see here is as I have captured something called reference. You wouldn't need to do this, but in my case, I have an approval rule for this specific line that is Marie Lopez and Victor Griffin and this is based on the dimension department code in my case and the fact that I have a reference called Marie Lopez so she is dynamically added due to the fact it's, that it says on the invoice. If it didn't say Marie Lopez here it would only be Victor Griffin as an approver. So this is just a standard expense invoice that's come in. And what we will do is we can create this one and it's first now that we create the actual invoice in Business Central and simultaneously send it out for approval. So if we close these two windows down and we go to the approval status, we can now see that we have one active invoice, which was the one that we just had a look at. And we can see that Marie Lopez is the current approver for this specific line. It's important to know that Xflow don't approve full invoices. We approve all the lines of the invoice. And you cannot post it until everything has been approved. If I go into the approval web where the approvers will be working from, we can log in as Marie Lopez in this case. When this user logs in, they can easily see all the invoices that they have lines to approve on. And it's highlighted with red if it, the due date is passed, past its due date. Uh, in the approval web, we, we also have an inbuilt manual. So if any of the users need to know how to do certain things, it's very easily accessible with GIF files to show you how you sh should do the coding and how you can approve and what functions that we support and have. We also support setting your own replacers if you go on holiday and many more things. So when Marie logs in, she, all she needs to do is click on the invoice and that will open up a view where she can see the 
the invoice PDF on the right hand side with all the information. They can see the coding, the header coding, and you can see the lines which needs to be approved by, for this one it's Marie, and after that it's Victor Griffin. This is depending on what, what sort of rights they have, they can do different things. You can set it so they can't change anything, like for instance this user is only a specific approver, so they can only approve this line. Um, you can set a user to uh, let them uh, change the coding, like we'll see in my next example, when the next user is going to approve this invoice. So for this user, what I will do is just approve. We do have the option to reject as well with a comment and many other things. And as soon as I have approved it, we can go back to BC and you can see that it's automatically updated the status saying that Marie Lopez has approved it. And it's now being sent automatically to Victor Griffin. Now if we go and look at Victor Griffin's inbox like we have here, we get the same invoice because Victor Griffin now has a line to approve on this specific invoice. So when we click it to have a look at the coding, we can now see that Victor Griffin has more options. They could change the coding of the department code, which is a di dimension. You can add different types of dimensions or any other values that you use on invoice lines here. So that can either be accessible or visible. And you can choose what they can do with each of those columns. If they are allowed to do coding, if they're allowed to just view it or change it or what they can change it to. You have the option to split if you're given the permission. So you can split this line into many more lines with different coding, which could send it out to different approvers as well. Because as you change, in my case, department code, it will automatically change who the next approver is, depending on that value. For this, I will just approve it again. And then we can go back to Business Central and see that it's updated to be fully approved. And at this point, it would be ready for posting. I would now like to show you a second version of an invoice. So I go back to the expense journal and have a look at this phone company invoice, which has, in my case, two example lines. These lines have been taken straight away from a Expo purchase code, which is a way for us to define what type of coding a vendor or a reference or, in this case, a contract would trigger and use. So the same vendor could have many, many different standard codings depending on what values are captured in the OCR interpretation tool. So in this case, I have a reference of this number and by it being this reference number and this vendor, it's automatically found a contract to match to, which we will have a look at very briefly right now. So Explore Contracts is a very easy way to create um, an approval, automatical approval potentially, for any reoccurring invoices such as phone bills, it could be any utility bills, uh, it could all also be used for expected invoices throughout the year. Uh, so what you would have to do is you will set up the general terms of when the invoices are expected to be be received when the contract should be valid from and to you will specify the co total contract amount so throughout the whole contract period uh, in my case I uh, the system would not allow an automatic generation and approval of these documents if the total amount for all the contracted invoices go above 180,000 euros uh, we can't have, in my case, over 20,000 per invoice and have it be automatically approved. And below we can see that I'm expecting per month, it could be two months, you could put any, any term here, or a year. But in my case, for every one month, I expect no more than four invoices. And a month is defined by the start date and this invoice period. So between the first and the last of a month, a total of four invoices are allowed.
and I've enabled check periods. You can also set up a contract reminder. So if it's within one month of the end valid to date, it can send an automatic email to a, a person telling them to have a look and maybe renew the contract. And then we can also have it auto approve a matched invoice if we want to have it as automatic as possible. Along with you can set the different approval rules, the coding from the export purchase code and so on and so forth. And obviously copy the attachments to the matched invoice. If you have a contract PDF that you want to have on every single invoice that goes through this contract. We also have a function in Xflow that will, if you want to use the function, it will require you to approve any changes done to contracts or creation of new contracts. So not anyone can just create any contract. Saying all that, we can now see that we have this contract. We have the two lines that's triggered from the contract. When I press create and create this invoice, this could be automated as well to create it for you as soon as it comes into the journal from the OCR interpretation. If we now go to Xflow approval status, we can see that this one will not be needing to be sent for approval because it matched all the boxes and it was not over the maximum amount and so on and so forth. So it's already ready for posting. And then if we go back to the import journals, the final type of invoice I want to show you is a purchase order matched invoice. When it comes into Xflow from Readsoft with the order number, it will look at the order for this vendor and have a look if there are any posted receipts that are ready to be invoiced. And it will grab those receipts and display them for you down below. One thing that's extra uh, in Xflow is this bottom line. It's not part of the order. Uh, we have the logic, if you want to turn it on, to automatically generate a line with a specific coding or a couple of lines of, of your coding choices that could represent certain things like freight. Since most invoices might only have a small freight charge at the bottom, which wouldn't be captured unless you chose to do so. You could also interpret the lines for the invoice. So Readsoft would capture all the lines and do a three-way match. Uh, that's also a possibility. Uh, but as I said, in this case, we've just used the order number and the vendor to grab the receipt number that was available for this order. And we can see that they've all been applied a specific approval rule, depending on the criteria in this case, because it's a PO, purchase order matched invoice. And the bottom one would be sent to a different set of people if we have, have a look below. So the top one, top three would be to Alex Erickson and Henrik Ward. And the bottom one would be sent to Sandra Smith and Henrik Ward due to the fact that it's a department code on this as well. If we now press create on this one, and then go back to the approval status, we can now see that we have three invoices which are ready for posting. Since in my in the settings, I've set it to only require approval of purchase order matched invoices if there are any differences between the order and the invoice itself. So the next and last step that you would have to do is post batch. And now we can see that all the documents were processed and we don't have anything left because everything was fully approved and ready for posting. So what we can do now is we could go into the Xflow history, which is a view similar to the approval status, but this is only for posted invoices. So here you see the same information as before, but it's only for the posted documents. And you can always Press on the button card to see the actual Business Central 
invoice card. And you also have access to Navigate where you can see the GL entries, the vendor ledger entry, and so on and so forth. So this is how it posted that invoice. Anywhere throughout BC where you are pointing towards a specific invoice that's gone through Xflow, you do have the incoming document always available, which would be the, in the PDF. So you could always click it, download it, and then view it. And that's all for me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Emil, for that uh, wonderful demo. I hope it was clear to everyone how we were actually able to process things. I'm going to close this off with, with providing you with three of the key considerations that we think are, are really necessary for automating AP. And this doesn't really matter if you're doing it in Business Central, GP, or finance operations. But these, these are the three things that I really think you should look at. So first one, are you taking a holistic approach? And what we actually mean is that are you getting all of your invoices into your one channel? Regardless if you're getting invoices on paper, if you're getting the emails, if you're getting e-invoices, can you funnel them through one, one channel? And then what you're trying to do is find a way to automate as much of it as possible to minimize manual labor. Uh, with Xflow, there's a lot of flexibility so you can actually get optimization on a on a level that fits your company regardless if you're looking at uh, automating po matching or if you're automating uh, contract or, or agreement matching you're looking to automate variances or tolerances if you just want to do it the simple way and you have a lot of expense invoices say if you're a you're a company that's working in professional services you probably won't have that much on po we can automate the approval workflows Secondly, I think you should really look at, are you actually leveraging your technology to the full extent? Are you leveraging your ERP investments? And, and one of the things I think is important here is just to try to skip as much duplication of data as possible. As you saw with, with in EMIL's uh, demo, uh, in Xflow, if you do something, you will actually trigger that uh, instantaneously. So you're basically building on top of your business central investment. Look at you know what technology can you use? Do you want to look at RPA or business rules? Do you want to start looking at machine learning? And then I also think that you should take in consideration implementation versus integration complexity. I know that some people will say, well, you know, if I have a third party solution in the cloud, all I have to care about is the integration. And the thing is that once you have it embedded in, uh, you don't need to manage that integration at all. And since we're embedding and implementing Xflow using standard Microsoft technology, it's a really simple thing. And the final bit I think you should look at is if you can actually measure your success. So can you track the end-to-end -end process? Can you follow up on the KPOs that matter, or KPIs that matter? Well, you know, looking at POs, non-PO spend, looking at turnaround times, looking at which suppliers have are sending you invoices with lots of exceptions so that the AP staff actually have to do a lot of manual um, work. You know, identifying those bottlenecks will enable you to increase the efficiency in your process. And that will, of course, turn accounts payable into not just a invoice processing department, but actually a data source that can be leveraged to the greater enterprise. Definitely from procurement per, the procurement perspective, you can look at which suppliers do you really want to work with? Which suppliers don't you want to work with? Which suppliers do you want to work with that, are sending, that you're sending POs to, but they're sending you invoices that doesn't really match? So procurement gets a lot of information from this. Uh, finance, the same thing. You can monitor your cash flow really well. Um, I think this is a really, really important thing. So take the holistic approach, look at it. So you're basically getting one channel, leverage your ERP investment, your BC investment to its greatest extent as you can and try to measure everything that you can do. Thank you for your attention and thank you for taking the time. And I hope it was really provided you with some great value.